Hi guys, I'm out in the garden again and I've just taken a beanie off so I don't know if there's a red mark across my forehead. Yeah, so I'm out in the garden again and I'm just um, taking some weeds and, and sort of plants sort of way overgrown out of one of the gardens and um, I don't know if you know but as you can tell behind me we live in a very high fire hazard area for Australian bushfires and I'm standing there doing my gardening and I could smell smoke and I thought maybe the next door neighbour had a fire now it's probably it's warm enough for a t-shirt and a pair of shorts today so I'd say it's probably about around 20 degrees so it's reasonably warm and I don't know if you can hear the wind or if you can see it in the trees or anything but there is wind and there's like gusts all of a sudden anyway, point of the story I started to smell bushfire smoke and I thought maybe the next door neighbour had one and the new next door neighbours and I thought maybe they aren't from the bush and they don't understand that you don't light a fire on a windy day especially if the weather's reasonably warm and the ground is so dry the ground is really dry and as you can see there's lots of mulch and sticks and stuff everywhere and if I turn this way you can see how thick the bush is on that side. Our place is a little bit cleared. Still pretty bushy but a little bit cleared but on the other side of the fence it's quite bad. Anyway so I walked down the end of our driveway which is probably about a hundred meters maybe not that far but it's very if I turn around it's very thick scrub. Yeah that's our driveway like right as far as you can see it's past that. So yeah, thick scrub as a bush. Now can you see the sky if I lift that up? See my hat here, apart from that, you can see the smoke where the sun is shining through. Yeah, that's way too close for my liking. So we've lived away from the, the bushfire areas for over three and a half years now. So it wasn't something that sort of popped into your mind very often because you didn't have the smell you didn't have it on the news, people you know in your local town talking about it etc so yeah being away from it you don't really think about it but as soon as I smelt that smell it smells different than if someone's having a like a fire in the house like a like a wood fire I'm just gonna swap, oh, I'm gonna one of them stick things selfie sticks it smells different and I couldn't see any smoke but I could tell from where it was coming from so I went for a little walk down the driveway to see if the new neighbour was having a fire and to maybe have a discussion about not lighting them in this weather but it wasn't him so I didn't have to have it um, It so down the end of our driveway I'm pretty sure I've never filmed this but down the end of our driveway there's another property on the other side and they have quite a cleared paddock let's, let's go with a, about 5 to 10 acres worth of cleared and then on the other side of that is the power lines easement and that's complete bush that's like just left to do its thing it's alright I forgot to hear somebody it's left to do its thing um, just grow and do whatever and I walk down the end and you can't see it until you get right to the end of our driveway because it's such thick scrub you can't see up into the sky if you look see how it's like real thick with trees so you can't see things until you get right up to it and this is a really long-winded story but this is how freaked out I was um, there was a lot of smoke not from someone's fire like you get used to how much smoke is going to come out of someone's backyard fire you know there might be a lot but from the ground there's not that much it's all up in the air but basically all the trees were full of smoke for quite a lot and I was like I won't say what I said. I ran. I don't do running at all. <laughs> I ran about a cup of the driveway and my heart was pounding but I didn't care because my husband was, husband was inside. I rang back up the driveway to go and get his attention and I'm like I can smell bushfire smoke and there is a lot of it. It's not someone's backyard. Um, I think we should either go and investigate or you can look online on their Facebook page, our local Facebook page. Uh, or there's a website, New South Wales, like Australia bushfire website. So we can look on there and he just looks at me and laughed and, and I, at that moment I'm thinking, well it's not funny, this is serious. He said, oh they're having a burn off, it's a local bushfire brigade. 
Mm -hmm. The relief that I felt when he said that was huge. You can probably hear the wind now. And you can maybe see it in the background. But it's still... I'm going to have a complaint. It's still not a good day for a bushfire. Um, it's a controlled burn off. So there's people... There's um, fire brigade people there. Bushfire brigade people. Uh, with water trucks and they have the special tools that they light the fire with. It's kind of like a... I've got no idea what it is, but some sort of fuel that they just drip on the ground and it just very slowly burns. So it isn't controlled fire, but it's still windy. And thank you for freaking me out. And thanks, husband, for not telling me that they were having a burn-off. Uh, we found out from our neighbour there was a pamphlet going around. There's a plane. There's a pamphlet going around into everyone's letterbox to let them know that was going to happen because it's literally from where I'm standing would be less than 500 meters away um, and it's quite thick the smell and you get also get used to the smell as well so if someone's having a fire there's not a lot of smoke so you got used to the um, intensity of the smell and when it's a bushfire it's really thick yeah, so all of a sudden, all these emotions of bushfire, like scared, what are we going to do? I haven't packed anything in the house. Um, yeah, evacuation plans going through my head as I'm running down the driveway. You know, it's like a million things go through your head when you think, oh no, what's going on? And the smoke's just getting thicker. I am outside. It won't, it, I, should be, I should be okay outside with the smoke. But it makes your whole house stink too. Luckily there's no washing on the line. So that's a bonus. But yeah. And I've probably chatted for, I don't even know how long because it doesn't tell me. But do you have things in your area that sort of freak you out? Like we're in a really high risk bushfire area. We choose to live here. It's beautiful. As you can see from the background, it's very beautiful. Most of the time you don't have to worry about it but during summer or in, or in any hot season you do have to worry about it and being away f for more than three years it kind of like really rammed at home and I just smelled that before and I was like you need to go inside and we always pack like a big plastic tub or a tote you know the plastic totes we pack one of those with our emergency stuff so all of our important documents um, my wedding dress, uh, you know, important photos, family photos, all the things that you cherish. Yarn, there's a bag of yarn. Well, there used to be, there's not anymore, I've used it. So I think tonight I'm going to pack a couple of totes. I do need to go and buy a couple as well. You know, pack two or three big totes that you can just literally grab and just shove in the car and get out. Because, what is it? It was 2001, I think. We had a huge bushfire go through here. We didn't live here at that time, but we did own the property. And part of our property, like our buildings were here, but there was no house or nothing. Um, 2001, this was like the moon. This was completely black. Ooh, I'll just walk over here. This tree behind me. It's just one of the trees I've picked. Can you see the black char? Ooh, just up on the branches there, it'll be all black. If I turn around, there's a really big tree just there, that's all black. Yeah, so 2001 we had a massive fire go through and um, in our street we lost, some people lost a house. They collected vintage, um, what do you call them? Like horse and carts, the car part. They collected those, they lost a stack of those in the fire. Um, my sister-in-law's parents lost their house. They are a couple of streets over from us. They completely lost their house, everything they own, just gone. So yeah, it's pretty scary. Just turn around and see if you can see the smoke. I don't know if it's really showing up on the camera, but it's definitely there. You can definitely see it. It's like it's foggy. Um, especially when the sun rays go through. And also too, if you've ever experienced the bushfire, um, 
the sun changes color if it's really thick smoke it goes like an or a real orangey color where the sun is on the ground all here it's a different color than what it normally is so yeah yeah like i said i'm getting carried away about bush fires i'm freaking myself out i'm not a stress head but you know these things are real people they really are and especially when you can smell it, it makes it a lot more real do you have things where you live that you know it's like not natural disasters if it's but like a flood or um you might have earthquakes um what else would there be you know hurricanes tornadoes um you know different countries have different things but yeah where we are it's definitely bushfire um we have pretty good droughts too in australia we are lucky where we are we're not too bad but definitely out in the middle of australia they have really bad droughts and farms and things just yeah kind of they can't keep their stock the cattle and stuff because they've got nothing to feed them on yeah so let me know what happens around your house it could be anything really what worries you about where you live you know it could be all the time or it could be just certain times of the year floods don't f worry us where we live like at this place where we are now uh, our place is quite high up if our house flooded uh, I'm not saying it'll be like a one in a hundred year event but it's reasonably high from where I'm standing I'm standing in the lowest part of our property where the water runs and I'd say it's like two meters our house is two meters from where I'm standing like up from my feta so we're pretty good and that way is all downhill and there's like um Let's just say it probably wouldn't flood where we are. <laughs> That's the short answer. Anyway, guys, um, I just wanted to get on and yeah, just talk about that. Yep, definitely packing that box. That sun is really bright. <laughs> Where's the shade? There we go. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're not having any sort of natural disasters where you are. My friend Jessica, she lives in California. Hey, Jess. Those fires around where she is. If you see me in vlogs with this thing on my wrist, I have a fitness tracker and it's reasonably new and I like to wear it in the garden and so I just cut off an old sock, just cut the end off and just wear it over it because I don't want to get it scratched and I've got the blue band and I don't want to get it really dirty. Anyway, I said I was going about three minutes ago. Anyway, hope you're having a great day, thank you for watching. Please subscribe as there's always new videos coming out. My channel is mainly about crochet, but I also do little vloggy style videos like this. Yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching. See ya. I can't wait if I'm holding my drink bottle. <laughs> Happy crochet.